First of all, uh, I sincere thank you to the forum, NCPS forum, and to the staff uh, for approving uh, this workshop to take place. Uh, there are they, the forum receives many applications, so it's not always a given that the application will be a workshop. So to the forum, thank you. Uh, to our program committee, you were spectacular, and I think the, really the session and the enthusiasm and the question reflects that. And then nothing would have happened without our speakers and panelists. So to everybody, thank you. I, um, a few things, <coughs> as you know, there are always proceedings after the forum, after the workshop. Uh, whatever we discussed will be in the proceedings, and all the lectures uh, will actually, and the videos will be online within a week. Because there were a few questions asked that perhaps were not clear, I'll just clarify them, and this one is for Otis. Uh, that, so we know what this workshop was all about. Uh, this workshop, this is a prostate cancer imaging in 2018. We addressed clinical care. And the clinical care, we have to differentiate between clinical care and clinical research. And especially in the academic centers, sometimes we don't differentiate and our papers are no, not pragmatic and clinical care relevant. So the clinical care for prostate cancer is T2 weighted and DW image. It's a 20 minute study. The entire template is half an hour. Radiomics that we discussed this morning are going to soon be a part of the clinical care because there are softwares that are being <clears throat> approved. And radiomics is a post-processing, so it doesn't take away from the scanning time. Molecular imaging, such as PSMA imaging, is a clinical trial. Clinical trial is different than clinical care. It is excellent. Now there is a multi-institutional study and we'll see incremental clinical value. There are other toys that we have. One of them that we love is a hyperpolarizer in vivo imaging of prostate metabolism. It is in pre-phase one trial. It's not even ready for a multi-center trial. We are all aiming to give you images like this, three-dimensional aggressiveness painted through the tumors, but we are a long way from this to be a reality of clinical care. We use molecular imaging heavily, especially in the drug development, but this is clinical research and this is why we didn't discuss. This one imaging in the drug development where we actually, it's published Cancer Research 27, we use targeted estrogen receptor imaging to find the dose. And what you can see here, <clears throat> that it was an ER antagonist, and the biology relevant dose was much lower than the maximum tolerated dose. This is, uh, those are advances of imaging, and for phase one clinical trial, they're superb. Phase one clinical trial is not clinical care, and it's done in very few institutions. One of the most exciting parts of imaging are teranostics, targeted imaging and targeted therapy. The DOTA TATE was just approved for neuroendocrine tumors, but it's going to be offered in a very few tertiary centers, probably around 10 centers around the country. This is clinical care, but it is exclusive clinical care that yes, it costs a lot of money, but considering how well we're doing, 
with the neuroendocrine theranostics, it's actually money extremely well spent. And patients that used to fly to Europe will now get treatment because it's about 10 days ago that Lutera was approved. What we talked at this workshop is ABC of radiology and pathology that Amy showed in the morning that when you do serial tumor measurements, there are a number of mistakes. We already have the tools. They are FDA approved. They are available, but they are not widely distributed. They cost money, and they also cost maintenance. We happen to use Mint technology. It's phenomenal. And our oncologists are absolutely in love with it. Not only that the measurements are accurate and precise, but there is a longitudinal display what's happened to the tumor. So those tools are already available. Why are we so concerned, and that Richard said, that imaging radiology <clears throat> By data, it's uh, published in 2017, but Dana Siegel from Crico Institute, radiology is 8%, pathology is 6%. In radiology, the number one reason for arrows is CT scanning. It's that what we consider simple CT that has a, such a high error rate, and that's where we have to raise the bar in oncologic imaging. I ask each moderator to give me points from their session. Rich, your summary was outstanding. But since I made them all do the work, we'll go through the slides. So the lessons learned for the common teams that complexity of cancer diagnosis and treatment requires a multidisciplinary approach. I think we all agree that it's a team science and not only talking between radiology and pathology, but really talking with our friends in oncology, surgery, radiation oncology. That requirements for quality improvement, culture, infrastructure, leadership, engagement, bandwidth for governments, formal interdisciplinary government structure, and measure, 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 as we kept hearing from our friends from Intermountain. It's really measure outcome as frequently as you can, and you will change culture. For the session number one, this is from Chris Cogl, Cancer care is multidisciplinary. All cancer, all cancer patients need access to high quality workforce. How do we make expertise available? And then also addressing lack of insurance, cost sharing, pre-authorization, all the administrative barriers that somehow we do need to address. Another one, cancer care is multi, it keeps coming, it's multidisciplinary, and we really need to pay attention how to pay practice as a team. Similar issue are faced by pathology. Should there be a mandatory review of all new cancer diagnosis for pathology, and then people say for radiology? You can review, but you don't know what you're missing for those that have not been diagnosed. Use a checklist, convergence of imaging and pathology. No question, integrated diagnostics are our future, but we are not there. We first need to train the workforce that know what cancer imaging is all about. Beware of dissemination of technology without adequate evidence validation and training, and need for standardization <clears throat> display of meaningful data. Uh, session number two, I think it's music to our ears for this workshop. So oncologic imaging needs to be integrated into curriculum of our residency program. It hasn't been done. The APDR promised that they're going to do it a certificate of special competency in oncologic imaging should be developed 
based on achieving and demonstrating critical competency. And Jane Brink promised to pursue that through the ACR, and that's wonderful. Uh, Rich, you're going to like this one. Oncologic imaging will be added, a clinical practice area for ongoing longitudinal assessment as a part of the M M MOC. Now, they have to present it to ABR, but it's very likely it's going to go. Peer learning promise, and then deputized radiology as having oncologic expertise, while fellowship is desirable, special training and continuous measure may really be much better than what we have today. Focus on pathology training on reporting. Standard APCP training needs to be augmented with molecular diagnostic genomics and within the fourth year residency, we're going to follow up with pathology to see how they project to implement and It's a very good suggestion. PLR learning, just like in radiology, ABR transition into longitudinal, and pathology is moving to competency-based medical education. Uh, to be for the workforce, it really takes five to 14 years for new knowledge to be disseminated, and we hope that CDS that is going to be implemented will really will change that. A current health system able to support CDS, somebody from Group B needs to take that and further and see how to make it an action item. Barriers to acceptance of CDS. Um, physician acceptance, make it simple. Coding, interoperability, cost, it is a huge part. You really have to have budget to put into implementation of all of that. Pathology reports are not formatted to support CDS, incentive, a gold card, or pre-authorization. I think that talking about the CDS, we're going to try to assign somebody from the workshop to see if they can follow through, because it's not only making the action items, but how we can follow through on those. Uh, three, diagnostic management tip and at Vanderbilt should be a role model for pathology. Project ECHO, I think we were all in awe. It was absolutely superb. Can we implement that to other areas? Large employers paying for second opinion. I feel obviously that the grand rounds are very successful. There are other out with the even centers. MSK White has the same uh, strategy. So more and more people are going directly to the employers to see and pay for the better care and second opinion. Uh, new oncology care models moving to value-based payment, that uh, smile to our friend from CMS on high-quality pathways. But it's all moving, and we have to see how it really works. And it's not one-time deal. It has to be revisited and revisited, and I know you said that. Uh, requirements for quality improvement, uh, again, comes culture, change MD behavior, requires measurement and feedback. Um, going to the practice, to MD as we are going, we are all competitive, and we all want to be the best. Nobody wants to have C. But how to improve on the C and to measure peer learning, educate, and then go back. Uh, engagement, bandwidth, governments, and then measure, measure, measure. Session three, centralized services. This is what we talk about. Should we have centralized services for special exams? Maybe you don't think prostate MRI is special, but it is special considering a high error rate. Should there be available consortia of telemedicine that you can just send the images to be read, work with employees, and adapt payment to scale proven approaches. A section four, it was genomics, pathonomy, radiomics will become relevant. Radiomics, it's already software FDA approved for radiology, so absolutely correct. Data sharing is a big problem. 
interoperability standards. We heard a lot of that about that. It was an excellent session. But now we need to know how to move forward. And then machine learning, oh my God, I can't wait for come. Machine learning and AI to replace a repetitive risk to increase accuracy in standardization. And only those, the, only those that understand the interdisciplinary approach in cancer care will survive. And then, read, build a specialized workforce. I think we all agree, and obviously ABR and ACR are going to take steps. Support a less specialized workforce via CDS, absolutely, as well through telemedicine and consortia enable better access to specialized expertise. Um, you know, uh, Rich, we have to see that at um, different states, some states reimburse for second reads without a problem. Some states do not. So this is something that we actually have to look at at state-by-state -state basis. And then how do we do it and how do we pay for it? So altogether, I think it was an outstanding workshop. I cannot thank you enough. To the moderators, if I went through your points too, sh too fast, my apology. But thank you all very, very much for coming. Thank you.